What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Thursday Night Airbrush Down in Dirty Tricks. It is 8 p.m. on Thursday, May 11th. Hope everyone is having a great evening. And I think we're starting out all good here. We got Mr. Terry Weaver over on Facebook. How you doing, Terry? And we have a bunch of you guys over here on YouTube. We are getting ready to rock out. Very, very cool. Let's see. Let's do a test. Let's make sure we got good audio. We got good video. Let me know if anything's a problem before we get started. That's why it's already starting better than last week, because last week <coughs> started like bleh. <laughs> Calvin Jones! Yes, of course we missed you. I thought my tumbler I spent four hours painting across the room yesterday. Oh man, that's no fun, man. That's no fun. Flex, what's going on? Gary Shees. Darren Martin's going on, brother. And, uh, Michael McClung. All right. Let me show you uh, what I have going on tonight here. We got our reference image right here. So I decided to do kind of a mashup. You know, Pirates of the Caribbean, Pirate Skull with the Mythosaur, Mythosaur, <laughs> Mythosaur Skull with Cross Swords. What I did is I did a cross, um, Vibro Sword, uh, which is a Mandalorian sword, and the, of course, the, um, oh my god, the, uh, yeah, <laughs> I just brain farted, uh, the dark saber. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I came up with a sketch, uh, and what I did is I did a. Let's uh, let's switch cameras here. Let's go to my multicam. We'll drop that down. So I got a nine by fourteen inch panel. Calvin's already jumping and giving me some love. Thank you, thank you, my friend. Much, much appreciated. Let's give you a big cheer and crowd. Do I have it? Well, my stream. Oh, well, I'll give you a big yell since that just didn't do it. All right. Never cross beams. They got. <laughs> so cool. Um, so what I did is here. I got a nine by fourteen panel. I've painted it with silver. Uh, this is a, a silver sealer. My board's a little messed up right here. Wow, oh, that just happened. Let's, uh, let's fix that. Go, we're in, we're in. So, 9 by 14 panel. I have did a silver sealer. It's got a half inch border around it, so it'll be white border. And then I did my typical paper transfer where I do the active, you know, the, um, the charcoal, the charcoal transfer, and then I put the uh, FBS yellow over it. Uh, give me one second, guys. I need to restart something. Because without that, that's going to be a problem. Hmm. I think I got it fixed. Yeah, I just lost a little connection to one of my switchers. Sorry about that. I'll have to edit that one out later. See, this is what happens when I don't have my daughter here helping. All right, so recap. Sorry. Uh, I use the FPS Gold Transfer, and I put it over what I already transferred the image, the uh, pencil line work. And if you look really close... The FPS Gold is so nice, you can see right through it. So what you're seeing, this line work, is actually under the tape. Okay, it's not over the tape. And I owe Calvin this. Yeah, we got the chair. All 
I think I see what the problem is. It doesn't like the cheering. So obviously the sound is a problem tonight. So we're not gonna mess with that soundboard anymore. We're just gonna keep it going like normal. All right. So we got everything here. I've transferred the image and we're gonna do this nice little mash up. Virgilio, uh, Virgilio, yep. How we doing? So like I said, I've already transferred this on. You're, you're seeing the pencil line through and we have the silver sealer in the background. It's a very coarse metallic. And I'm going to talk about what we use for paint. So what we use for paint tonight is my, you know, my four to one mix of 4011, 4020. I'm using 4050 to make mix my candies. For candies, I'm using candy black, candy midnight blue, and I have some illustration opaque white that I'm going to use. And this is all going to be over that silver sealer. Okay, that's what we're using for paint. And of course, we use Kratex colors. My I want airbrushes. This is the FPS Gold Mask. This stuff right here, which is I I love using it for like freehand cutting. I, I plot with it quite often too, especially for artwork. But when I gotta see through stuff and get a really thin edge, this is what I always use. And on my Visionaire, and of course, fisheye filter. Thank you, Ken, for all the support. And let's get back to the magic. All right. Let's zoom back out here on that camera. It's much nicer having this third Lumix camera here. Now all the cameras are matching and they all look great. So it's really, really good. And let's take that away here. All right. Hope my job doesn't get in the way of watching this live. Oh, hope it doesn't either, man. <laughs> All right, hey mom, my mom is over on Facebook. Hi mom, everyone say give a shout out to mom. Happy almost Mother's Day, love you. All right, so I got my basic design here, like I said, which is basically a Pirates of the Caribbean pirate flag mashup with the Mythosaur skull, the Dark Saber, and uh, a Viber Sword. So just kind of give that mix. And I, I want to do that silver metallic, you know, that kind of chrome feel, and the silver shield is really brilliant for that. And I wanted that kind of like blue steel, not blue steel from Zoolander, <laughs> but I wanted that kind of blue tint. So that's why I'm using the um, the midnight blue and then the black added to it and the candy. So I'm going to start just by cutting the silhouette of everything. If you guys got any questions, feel free to shoot them out. Mr. Barker, how's it going? So what I want to do, actually, you know what? I'm going to cut the silhouette of the Mythosaur first. The one thing you'll notice if you use the uh, FBS Gold, it's so thin that the only drawback sometimes is not seeing your cuts without kind of moving your head around. Oh, and I got an actual, I got a new camera angle. Check this one out. This is going to be for like shorts and stuff. How's that new angle? That's a little different. Wonder from the bottom. I set this new camera up actually when I was doing those, that mini figure for New Worlds, which is that video is going to be out in a couple weeks. Um, so now we have a dedicated camera that's vertical that's going to be for like YouTube shorts and future videos on like Instagram and stuff like that was kind of the plan. Michelle Miller, what's going on man? Max Thrasher, how we doing? Thank you for popping in everyone. So, I opted, I had time, but I opted for hand cutting on this, which is probably going to kick, you know, and it'll bite me in the ass. Um, or butt, sorry. Sorry, YouTube. Don't monetize me. I meant donkey. Yeah, the donkey version of the A word. 
Because um, what else kicks you? Um, so I, I opted to do it by hand. I could have plotted this. I could, probably could have you know, made all these cuts in about a half an hour and did a plot. But I really wanted to just do it by hand because not everyone has a plotter. So, you know, I like just doing it this and I wanted to kind of just do it by hand and go from there. Pirates of the Galaxy theme. Oh, I like that title. Actually, I should do a um, Guardians of the Galaxy kind of mashup on that. It would be actually really cool. And call it that. Which I'm not going to spoil it, but I saw Guardians of the Galaxy the other night. Absolutely phenomenal movie. Definitely, I would say that puts it in probably the best trilogy of all time. You know, as far as you know, just a consistent, great series. It was really cool. I dug it. Brother Todd. Brother Todd's over on Facebook, or was. Can't tell. So basically, I'm just cutting the basic silhouettes out right now. My goal is to pull the background out. Pull all this out here. And uh, get some good delineation so I can spray the background. And you know, I like to get this stuff off pretty quick. So I can... I can get to just freehanding as much as possible. And that's good there, good there, good there. You know, I'm gonna do these eye sockets too. Just might as well pull them out. Nothing fancy, it's regular whole number eleven exacto blade. Star Wars prequels, those are not the best of all time. Look, I will say the prequels, I hate, I was never a big fan of them. But over the years, they've grown on me more and more. Um, but I wouldn't put them, I definitely wouldn't put them as the best of all time. Personally speaking. Hello to yourself. Thank you for popping in. Thanks everyone for sharing. Thanks everyone for popping in on this Thursday night. I got you. I hate when I double cut stuff. So I'm just basically cutting the silhouettes of the shape because I want to darken this background up. It's not going to be too crazy of a background. I'm going to keep it simple. This is the two hour painting. But I like this theme. I may do something a little bit more complex down the road with it. We just shall see. Do you strop? I don't know what strop is. <laughs> Sorry, sir. And now I'm going to pull this background out. And again, this is Createx Silver Sealer, which I sprayed this about an hour and a half ago. How's the weather up here? We're currently. We're straight of rain. We, yeah, you know, we had a little rain earlier today popped in, but this been this is probably the best week we've had in the whole season. Um, it was a very rainy and cold April, like super cold and rainy, and uh, we're kind of back on track to normal now, which is nice. So it's been a really nice week. I think it's supposed to be really hot tomorrow here, actually, which is good because we got the pool open. Thank you, Darren. Um, Gary Sheese, thank you, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm hesitant to do the sound because the sound effects have been messing up my soundboard. So just yay, ka-ching, thank you. I don't have a cowbell here or I do it. Thank you very much, Gary. 
for all the support. New to all this, but enjoy learning. Thanks, Larry. Thanks for popping in. We're all new at some point, man. I was just new a lot longer ago. <laughs> like a lot longer ago. Not crazy old, but you know, old enough. Nothing better than watching Scott Amber. Why you clean up the last of the airbrushes? <laughs> Six or eight of them. Yep. So you might get 20 inches. Man, that's a lot of freaking rain, man. Keep an eye on your basement. Oh, I just pushed down too hard on my ultra stand. My turn that far gone here. There we go. Ah. You know, I switched to the Havel blades. Uh, months ago. These are X-Actos and I, I don't like X-Acto blades anymore. The Haver ones, man, are so crisp and sharp, like right out of the box. You know, I have n like very little no problems with them. They're outstanding. Um, you gotta order them usually direct, but they're a medical supply company. But, you know, they make number 11 blades, not just a, you know, not just a medical type blades. But cool, yeah. Let me know what that is. I'll look into it. So, like, for those who, who catch me, like, you know, plotting things, if I was plotting this, I would probably design the plot file the same exact way. Wherever I'm cutting with this razor blade is really where I would put the, the cuts for the plot file. They're pretty much one to one, um, which just makes it really, really easy when you're going from hand plot to um, from hand cut to plot. All the techniques work the same. All right, so let's talk about this color here. Let's make sure it's centered on camera. I've got that nice silver metallic. Oh, and what I did with the silver metallic, uh, I don't think you can really, I don't think you can see it now. Uh, I did a little scuff of a scotch bright pad. So a scotch bright pad scuffed across it, which those scuffs won't go away because I'm actually scratching the silver flake. So it kind of has that brushed steel or Beskar um, look to it. Let me see if you can see it in that angle. I'm not sure. Oh, so Larry, this is... Um, FBS gold mask. This is basically a gold tape, uh, but it's a masking material that you can use in a plotter. So you can feed this into a plotter, cutter, cricket cutter, cameo cutter, like a craft cutter. Uh, plotters are just a little bit more um, fine detail than you know, larger scale, and they've been around a lot longer. So that's what I normally use, but it's, it's available in 6 inch, 20, 12 inch, 24 inch. So it's just basically big masking tape, but it's super, super thin. And very transparent, so that's what I what I have here. So just think of it as masking tape, just very good, high quality um, masking tape that doesn't leave residue behind. And uh, you know, it's designed for automotive custom paint and the whole kind of vinyl sign industry. So it's solvent and water-based paint friendly. I'm just going to do some of the quick cuts here. Just kind of get them out of the way. Like I said, this is where I would normally, if I'm designing it in the computer and plotting it, I would cut these same, these same things. Only a few people on Facebook. That's why we stopped catering to Facebook, right? Much better here. 
Good, good, good. We'll freehand most of that in. Yep, you can. Yep, we're going to show you. Uh, you can use transfer tape the exact same way. Brian Neely, how's it going, man? Yeah, so typically in the past, I would use transfer tape. Um, the FBS gold is. Um, is much thinner. So if you put them, if you actually lay them down, I don't want to know it specifically, but it's at least half the thickness of traditional transfer tape, depending on the brand. So you get a much finer paint edge. It cuts a lot easier, um, and it doesn't kind of separate and tear, you know, in layers. And you can see through it really well. I mean, you can see through trans most transfer tapes, uh, but this you can see through much cleaner. So, but you can do the same exact effect. It doesn't change the effect at all. All right. All right, all right, all right. We got, hey, Cam, what's going on, man? I should pop it in. All right, so we have our airbrush right here. This is just a regular, this is the Takumi Eclipse, but as we all know, the the head of this, and the head of a regular Eclipse, well, that's not a regular Eclipse. That's a regular Eclipse. The head is the same, so it's the same 0 0.35, 0 0.32 nozzle. It's just a shorter body. Uh, it's a side feed, and this is brandy new. Well, well, not brandy new now, but this is the one I started to use about a month ago. And uh, she's ready to rock and roll. And like I, I've answered a few questions this week about you know airbrushes and what's the best airbrush for detail and blah blah. blah. We get a lot of those. Uh, Darren, yes, I turned the AC on upstairs. Um, would you still take... I don't use Frisket ever. Uh, Frisket was great back in the day when I was doing illustration work. Um, but when I got into automotive and automotive paints with some solvents and then even some of the water-based paints, certain things have solvent, Frisket was a problem. Frisket, the glue Frisket brand, the type they use on the back side of it, sometimes would react with the paint and leave glue residue behind, especially on metals. Like if you put Frisket on like coated metal panels like these, like they're already pre-coated, like the enamel coat, they've been coated forever. It's not fresh. It still leaves glue behind. So I don't use Frisket ever, 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 ever. So let's see what we got for this color. So yes, I would use gold over for sketch any day. So this is the color. See, it's got that kind of like gray blue. I think this would be a really cool color off the of silver. Then I took the same color and I added black. I added black candy to it. Um, so for background, uh, background, we're gonna go. We're gonna go, gr oh, you know what we're gonna do? Watch this, we're gonna go kinda gritty and I'm gonna make it all like kinda blah, watch. So I'm gonna use some texture effects but I'm not gonna really worry too much about how they look. Just watch what I'm gonna do. This is gonna be a little sketchy. I'm gonna spray some isopropyl alcohol and water on this and let it let it all smear down. I want this background to just be gritty. What are your thoughts on the TH2 for base coating? Depends what you're base coating. So I love my TH2. And for models and like putting base color on graphics. Uh, but I wouldn't like base coat parts with it. Um, yeah, the Grex, the Grex doesn't move as much paint as the TH2 does. And I'll probably get some flack from Brian or whoever. Uh, I put them both side by side. I've had them both in class. And the TH2 atomizes and throws much more paint. Uh, even with the TH2 technically as a smaller nozzle and the Grex with their, I think, 7.7 .7 I find it just restrictive and it just doesn't flow. Um, but... I'd, I'd base coat something this big with it, and I have, um, but I wouldn't go too crazy. I wouldn't rely on it for, like, much bigger, you know, but for graphic stuff, it's great. All right. I'm going to take a little squirt bottle here of water. 
And we're going to see what we get. Kind of want to let it run down. And we're going to see what happens. I'm going to spray some alcohol. So the isopropyl alcohol makes the water like run instantly. I'm just going to let that settle. I just, I want to keep that drip. So see how that's happening? And I'm going to just take my air and start getting that isopropyl alcohol away from a distance. And I want to just keep as much of that square. A lot of bottles waiting for a life. Big squatchy. I do a lot of water bottles, canvas pan, etc. But sometimes I'm putting four or five coats with the Grex. That's really like the point seven. Although, so if you're going to be basing large areas constantly, the TH2 does an amazing job, and I think it would be way better than that. I know it's way better. Uh, for my personal use than the Grex as far as laying out and atomizing paint over a large area. But if you're constantly doing large areas and even tumblers and stuff like that, you want to really get a good amount of paint out. The LPH 80, there's just no second to it. It's just an outstanding gun. Um, it lays and atomizes paint beautifully. Now I'm going to just start patting this down. It atomizes paint beautifully. Um, I've actually like candied and cleared, you know, medium-sized motorcycle parts like small fenders and side covers with it. Um, it's probably, you know, for me, it's the best mid-sized gun you can get on the market, hands down. Um, aside from that, I think you'd have uh, Sada. You know, their NRs or their other mini mini jets are really, really, really good as well. I prefer the LPH-80 overall. I've had them both. Um, so, if you could only buy one and you're going to start painting a lot of stuff and you want to really lay a lot of paint more often, I wouldn't do the TH2. I would have the airbrushes and then the LPH-80. And then save some money up and when you need that in between, then you get the TH2. And you got the whole spectrum covered. So you get that nice drip by letting that settle. Look, that's all that's all dry now. So you can do a lot of these kind of grungy, cool effects with water-based. You just gotta play with it. Like, see that? See how that just getting a different effect. I love what just happened there. Isn't that cool? Now the key is to not wipe it. Isopropyl alcohol dissipates pretty fast and the paint will harden back up. Like it's almost not moving. See? That's already almost dry. It just reactivates what's underneath. I'm digging. You know what? I want to do a little bit more. I want to get a lot of like drip under here. And that is how you get really cool, gooey texture. So yeah, the ice probe will dry really quick. And I'm not really overly affecting the silver sealer underneath. If it was silver base coat underneath, like Createx regular base, it would reactivate it and they would blend the two together, which could also be a cool effect. But because the sealer and it's been dry, it's I'd have to put a lot on there, really work into it to really uh, pull anything out of it. So it's a good way to do that. I wouldn't do this trick as much with like a silver, just a regular silver base. So we're gonna drop for the basic drop shadow. Where that would be. Get those swords kind of popping off. Hmm. 
I'm gonna go, I'm gonna cover the whole thing, put it heavier down the bottom. <clears throat> you just watch, glad that helps. If you need any like more detail info, feel free to message me. I gotta see the different color shades on it. Give me two seconds, guys. I gotta change something. about that my computer went to screensaver which shut down something I always got some questions here it looks like it would be a cool effect oh yeah for oxidation look yeah this works really well especially with like brown candies and like some root beers and some you know greens and like teals you could really really play with this stuff quite a bit all right Let's pull this sword out here. Jim Watson, what's going on, buddy? Jim Watson is one of my OG customers. Way back. Not way, way back, but way or back than, than most. Exacto Blade. All right, so that sword comes through here, comes under here, and back to there. Oh, actually, this is this blade. This is part of the, uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah. That's part of the hilt. I got some pocket graphics, I got the rivet master, nuts and bolts. These are all good for doing these angles.
So when people say, this Yeah, ask it here or, you know, I'm on Instagram and I'm on Facebook, so you can follow me there. Send me a message. I'm usually pretty good about uh, answering back. So why are you taking off? Well, if you don't make it back, have a great night. Thanks for popping in as always. So for the end of the sword, if you don't know the sword, the blade of the dark saber has a lot of crackle in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put paint there. And then I'm gonna take my electric eraser. And I got the Medea one with a fine point. And I'm going to just put some crackles in there. Mr. Leahy! So basically what I'm doing is I'm letting those cracks come through. Let me, let me go to the camera. Top down cam. We'll zoom in a little bit. And we're going to just hit the edge of this blade. It expose that bright silver underneath. That kind of lightning look and feel. Steve! We're living the dream, buddy! Living the dream. Yeah, flex over on Facebook. What's going on, man? That's cool. Let's give it a little bit more racing. Get that. And we'll pull the upper edge of this blade. Bam! And that is part of the dark saber. I'm gonna do a lot more down here. Oh, where'd my exacto blade go? Man, I'm bad at losing stuff tonight. Everything is like disappearing. Going away. Nope, rolled underneath. Yep, Thursday night paint session. Alright, so let's get... Oh, I went through that color. Aha! It is the way.
Yes, yes it is. Oh, nice drop shadow. I know what Steve's thinking to himself right now. Is he really going to try to pull that off in two hours? Yeah, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Oh, that one got really dark when I zoomed in. There we go. Zoom out a little bit. It'll be a little clearer. Let's more light. Oh, sorry, man. Sorry that he's killing you. Have a good night, man. Good to see you. Thanks for popping in. Good. Now that he's gone. <laughs> just, just kidding, man. This is the spray. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I'm going to have to put that in a... This is... You coined it. But I'm going to use it. This is the spray. <laughs> That's awesome. There's definitely going to be some fine work in some of these blades that I'm probably going to do at the end <coughs> or after. Oh, yeah. I do a lot of t-shirts. Well, I did back in the day. Not as much anymore. This is definitely one of those ones that's probably going to get a little bit of extra work. After the fact. But we'll get the, <coughs> we'll get the gist of it all now.
think I have a slight clog in my fluid now, so I'm just gonna check that. So we are at, we have a bid starting. Pen here, we got this is Gary. Thank you, sir. <coughs> He's got to make you do math. <laughs> Thank you, Warlock, for that. Larry, have a good one. Thanks for popping in. This sword handle has got a lot of detail. I'm going to save that for near the end. I want to make sure I get a lot of this detail in first. See, it's stuff like this, all this little like details. That's where a plotter, when I'm doing live, comes in really handy. Because I can kind of pre make all that stuff and it just works really quick <sighs> yeah I gotta make some stuff going down here as we get to the end we will detail more of that stuff <coughs> it's either that or it's the airbrush you know it's like so basically one of these and you have the Mandalorian like I section carved into the front that might work There's enough basic detail there. 
<clears throat> hey, Larry. Where I have. I'll try to do a lot of this detail later. So let's get up to the skull. Skulls. We like skulls. Skulls are cool. Actually, before I do that, <clears throat> let's bring in some black. So what I'm going to do, this is the same Midnight Blue with black candy and a few drops of Illustration Black in there. Uh, Spectrochrome, Spectrochrome, yes, I have. I didn't apply it, uh, and I've done it over some other different chrome parts before you know others other chrome <coughs> spray chrome systems but uh yeah i have done some spectra chrome one of the clients over years ago was working with it uh, <coughs> out of all the chrome systems out there i think that's the, the best one it just really has the most chrome like look and when you candy over it it's even better which most of Chrome systems look better candied over because it really it takes your eye off the slight difference of the Chrome to you know the Chrome system versus reality of Chrome. I think one year I'm not sure if one year we were all messing with it at SEMA. I will say, <clears throat> the amount of years I've been painting, there are very few surfaces I have not painted on. But if Spectrochrome wants to send a panel out and sponsor a video, we'd be more than happy to do a how-to on it. Yeah. <clears throat> Fucking allergies have been horrible up here. I'm actually using a haul right now. I gotta take some clarity or something tonight. The pollen up here is ridiculous. Have I ever painted on cheese? Well, I've done some body painting back in the day, so define cheese. <laughs> you gotta think about that one first, aren't you? <clears throat> I 
Oh, nice. Champagne? Awesome. I watch the great kids with the bad. Cody, what's going on, man? Oh, we we can do the old. Um, what's the weirdest thing you've been asked to paint on? I'll give you one and see if you can top it. Portrait. Inside a casket at the funeral home the day before for the day of the wake. So which means the portrait reference is right there for you. I declined that one. But I was asked. That was probably the most oof. Steve, you've been asked to do some weird, paint some weird things. What do you got? Who's got the weirdest thing? So why don't you sit down? Who says you have to stand? A wheelbarrow. Huh. That could be fun. Do some cool stuff on a wheelbarrow. Not super odd, but it's got some character. I always thought it was a wheelbarrow back in the day. I think it was a barrel on wheels that you put the shit in. Skull on a wheelbarrow? That'd be fun. I'd take that gig. I mean, if they were paying. But I'm sure that would probably be one of those. It's just a wheelbarrow. Why so much money? I was once asked. Car, what were you asked to paint? Gasoline jug that was filled with alcohol. It's all beverage. Okay. So I'm on Facebook under Scott McKay. Um, you can find my face pretty easy. And on Instagram, it's under Scott McKay as well. And it looks like me with a mask. I should put those links in the description. Ooh, see, good thing I tested it over here and not on the panel. That would have been bad.
And if you go to um, uh, thinairgraphics.com, T-H-I-N-A-A-R-G-R-A-F-X, you can get a hold of me there. Carl, man, just wing it. Just wing it. Sorry, my computer keeps going to sleep and I keep losing the ability to switch. Gotta drive, where are you driving? Still thinking of the weirdest thing I've ever painted. Yeah, Steve's got a good list. And this is the link to... So mckayfineart.com You can email me from there as well. You know, we're here typically every Thursday. 8 o'clock, some other days here and there. You know, we're going to be getting into the next couple weeks, start doing some tabletop gaming miniatures. I'm going to be doing a lot of that coming up. That's going to go with the whole the whole New Worlds paint line. That was that rack, custom paint racks I made the other day. Cool. All right, let's get the teeth out. So the teeth, just like I've done in prior videos, you work from the outside in. Just pull them. Have a good one, man. Thanks for popping in. Anyone who's been looking at my store lately, I forgot to turn off Cowbell, which was the discount for 20% off. Uh, I am going to turn that off this weekend. So if you want any downloads and vectors, get on to mckayfineart.com. Use Cowbell at the end, as in more Cowbell. Uh, and get yourself some stuff before you turn it off, because it's about time I turn it off. Teeth in there.
People want more cowbell. Yeah, I left it on there. I just totally forgot to shut the discount off. So, <laughs> so the discount's been on there for like two months. Cool. Did you ever have enough cowbell? Well, I think at some point you can't have too much of a good thing. Looking good, yep. Start getting the tone in here. Let's see what kind of detail we're starting to miss. So, I'm going to start putting all the mid detail in with the same blue. And then I'm going to start going to the blue black. You can see in how this thing looks at the end of two hours. Like I said, whatever afterwards, I'm going to get into this sword and do some more detail afterwards and make it look ridiculous.
this will be our last Star Wars related piece for a while, I think. Two back to backs enough. Y'all whatever going, man. Thanks for popping this. Maybe see you next week. And remember, because this is a metallic base, when this is cleared, it's gonna pop. I don't know if that's stranger than an open casket with a person inside, though. That's my, that's still my oddest one. I've been asked to do urns with ashes inside. Still never done that, but I've been asked that a few times. With no, buy a new urn. I will paint it, and then you can transfer the ashes. Oh yeah, double paint anything. I'll paint anything, except when it gets around dead things. Or dead bodies, specifically, especially of young people. It's weird. I remember I asked my insurance agent that question. Yeah, I hope I cast the best up. I remember talking to my insurance agent afterwards. About that. So what if I had done that? She goes, I would have killed you if you did that. She's like, you are not covered for that liability. <laughs> like, you spill paint. <laughs> Imagine that. Airbrush blowing up all over. Whoa. That'd be a situation. I'll pay the casket for someone, just not while they're in it. Let's get some erasing in here. Let's switch to just top down. Sure, what we got. There's some high larger. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave that one alone. Oh, it is my larger electric eraser.
Oh yeah, Doug's painted on everything. Most airbrush artists have done people. Various parts of people. is not showing up as much as I want. It's a contrast. We gotta remember this is a candy, everything's gonna pop through it. Yeah, the more of in the casket isn't as bad as like, you know, like I said, I've done it, but not with the not with the person being memorialized. <clears throat> inside the casket. So, I haven't body painted in a while, so back in the day I was using liquid makeup, and then I think now it was, what was it, Pro Air? Uh, Pro Air I've used, I think it was. Um, I use dedicated body paint. I don't use, like, Createx and your Hobby Lobby paints like a lot of people do. You're asking for you're asking for trouble if you do that. It takes one person to have an allergy or latex allergy or a version of something in that paint. And you're done. So I've never risked it. It would have been better to use, it wouldn't have the same effect on the metal, the silver, but if I used illustration colors, the erasing would be a lot faster. Yeah, it adds texture, and so it erases the blue, so the highlights stay. So see what happens, um, how it reflects. If I put white over it, it gets duller. Oh yeah, there's lots of good fluorescent body paint. There's lots of that. Yeah, some of those best glowing paints are body paint. You know, the body, I mean, the actual body paints have so much money. It goes a long way, but it's... Yeah, they actually have a newer version of black light paint that is invisible until black light goes on. So it doesn't even have a color. It's clear, but it lights up blue, pink, purple. It's crazy. But if I was to use white right now, like I said, on, with the candy, it'll just kind of, it'll flop. A little bit. I'm going to use some bluish white, but I don't want to use a lot of it. Nine twenty-three. We are getting near the end. Well, the end for tonight. And said so this will get some work afterwards. 
next, but I won't. I won't have to like finish it up next week or anything. Yeah, the tattoo stuff's funky. <coughs> Bro, with the tattoo stuff, if that's using some really nasty shit, which is guaranteed to cause you cancer, because it's in your skin. There may be newer stuff out of the market that doesn't do that. But back in the day, yeah, that stuff was just... Yep, yeah, so Carl, if you're... The invisible stuff, you have to paint under black light. It's like when I, when I do Lumalore, the paint, when you put the Luma color on, you have to spray it under a black light or you can't see it. So you can't see if it's running, you can't see if it's laying out nice, you have to spray it under black light. That's starting to look kinda cool. Especially the stuff like way back in the day when it first came out. This probably some newer skin safe versions, but most of anything phosphorescent has some gnarly stuff in it. Oh yeah, the series is great. I was a little disappointed the Boba Fett. It was still good overall, but just saw it needed a little bit more. This is the spray. <laughs> That's not going away. Yeah, I, I like season three actually in some cases better than two, but you get it. The only thing I wanted more from season three was I wanted to see a direct tie-in to the Ahsoka series that's coming out. I wanted to see the Thrawn pop in or some type of like end credit that kind of showed it. Just I wanted a little bit more teaser tie-in, uh, and I would have liked to see more closure with some of the. I didn't the myth of the store. I want to see more of. And uh, was an IG-88 storyline was just a little bit, 
it was almost like they wanted to do more with it, and then it kind of didn't happen, so they just kind of did that quick end scene with it, and that was it. Like, it seemed like it was going to be way more important to the story, and it just wasn't. Yeah, definitely got hot up in the studio today. I gotta start running the I already had to run the ACs. Um I'm not gonna do much of a border. I might just Actually I know exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna probably chair for the edges because it's white underneath and I just make it look like like a just a like a steel plate. I mean, whoever takes it home, if they want something specific, we can always accommodate specific things. Because right now we're just at that bid of the 150. We have another bid. Darren is in at 180. Mickey Warlock. Anything about Darren? Darren's local. He doesn't have to pay shipping. Warlock's always on it. Yeah, so if you look at the reference, there's a bunch of like circle, half circle in here. There's some. I'm gonna cut these out and then spray them so they're really clean. I don't want to do them freehand. I think they'll just look meh. And I don't want them to look like that. I want them to look good. So, so we'll we'll add those in after the fact. <clears throat> but this is definitely a painting I want to expand on, maybe. A theme and do something a little bit more um, more detailed time wise.
But I do like this color over the silver. It looks really cool. You don't do meh. Nah, trust me. I've done meh before. I just usually don't let meh leave the studio if I can help it. Unless the customers are real, you know what, then I don't care. Uh, let's see you. We gotta get that focused in a little better. There you go. You can see a little different angle. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I will not comment or speculate. Now, aside from weird stuff, I've paid. I've gotten to make some really cool stuff over my career, so I definitely don't complain. We got body painting, that's always been fun. Paint a train. Me, Shorty, and Rhino, and Joel did that two years ago. First year of COVID. That was awesome. That was a ton of work, but it was. It was fun working with everyone. All right, so we got a little bit of the bluish white in here. Blue, ah, blue cheese. So now, put a little blue. So see all the white, what the white does. So the white looks really cool. The dinosaur, yeah, I did paint a Tyrannosaurus Rex. The Tyrannosaurus Rex at the museum. One of the Tyrannosaurus Rexes at the Museum of Natural History. Now it's up in, actually it's in Toronto. Right now. Anyone here from Toronto? Because it's on display up there now. So... White on silver, see what it does? It kind of does that flop layer, which is why I do the racing, but I kind of like to add them together and it makes the piece kind of shift really cool. Yeah, getting to paint a dinosaur bone, set of dinosaur bones with Lumilore, and then make it look like it's not painted, and do all the faux finishing.
Details. Got an angle. Starting to come together, starting to come together. We got 20 minutes or so, a little bit less. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. This one's coming out cool. Like I said, I got quite a bit of work ahead. To, I really want to flush out like these details, like this, all these sharp edges, and just make it look really, really cool. So I'll probably put another hour on it tomorrow. I think the border of the painting will look cool. Yeah, there's not enough room out here to do outer space. Um, I was I thought about doing a space scene kind of mixed in. I might, if I wasn't on a silver panel, I was originally just on a black panel and I was going to do that. Um, so I may revisit this piece. What I want to do is I want to do another one to kind of tilt it more so you can almost see the bottom jaw like, underneath. <coughs> and then I might have these swords go like up over the horns or come down and then I want the blades to, like go over the horns. Might be another version of this one down the road. Something I'll spend, you know, more than two hours on painting. Two hours is a good amount of time. But if I spend four to five hours or even like six or eight on a painting of this subject matter, I can really, really, really zone in on it and make some really cool things. <coughs> mm. Oh, this was one of my pre-pocket graphics. This was before we finalized them. It has no writing on it. That was prototype. That was testing phase. Fingerprint, thank you. Regulator, thank you. This is a spray. Awesome job. 
yeah, you know, it could be cool to also do like a, a Beskar um, swirl pattern, like that Damascus steel look. I like this piece. It's cool. Thanks, Michael. Oh, guys, I think this is about it for the night. <coughs> I am going to just show you the border. Just so you can see kind of a semi-finished. And I'm going to go back into this. So right now we're at a high bit of 180. Darren. Up there. Oh, you got the OGs. Well, I still got, you know, I got a box of OG holders. Just gonna do a little, a little bevel, a little bevel, a little bevel. Well, kids, that's looking like it's pretty much it for the evening. <clears throat> I'm going to switch out here. And that looks like it. We have a final bid of 180 on this thing, so that's going to Darren. Thank everyone for the super chats. And like I said, I'm going to go in. I'm going to do a little bit of extra work here. We're going to clear this thing, polish it up. And that's about it, guys. I'm going to clean up my airbrushes, call it a night. Get ready for a Mother's Day weekend. And I uh, hope everyone has a great Mother's Day weekend. With people they love and or those who you remember have an awesome weekend thanks for popping in guys and i will see you all next week peace